Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today is another one of my Hunky Dory Design Team videos. For this we are featuring the Moonstone die combos and these are sentiments, large die sentiments with smaller sort of little stamps that go with that large die. For example you might have birthday and then it says happy in the, in the stamp. For this particular video I'm using the thanks but if you go on across to the blog post that goes with this video. If you're on YouTube, you will find the link to that blog post in the paragraph below this video. But on that blog post, you will see the photographs of the other cards that I made for Hunky Dory for this launch. And each card is using a different sentiment die combo. So you'll see the different ones that are available. And they're all really very different cards as well. But for now, let's get crafting. So I'm starting out with one of Hunky Dory's pre-scored cards that's five by seven. I then cut pinks of pink adorable scorable at four and seven eighths by seven inches for both the inside and the front of the card and then I cut a piece of white ink me card at four and three quarters by seven again for both the front and the inside however I only stuck the pink on the front um, because I needed the white piece for this next section where I'm going to use these beautiful prism inks in the pink jelly bean and the mauve I'm just wanting to make it into a, like a watercolor effect so I'm just putting the ink down onto my stamp block here and I'm really squishing a lot of ink out because I want to make sure I've got plenty of color even though I want to water it down and I'm then doing exactly the same with the beautiful mauve. These two colors look so lovely together. They're so sort of delicate um, especially when they're watered down so I just think they work really really well together for what I want to achieve. So I'm just using a bit of spray and just literally with water and then a paintbrush and I'm just taking my paintbrush into the pink and I'm just literally sort of just roughly painting up and down near the top of this piece of card. Now this card is actually slightly longer than seven inches. I wanted to give myself just a bit of margin to cut it if I need to. So it just gave me a bit of playroom on the height, but it is the four and three quarters width that we need. So it's exactly the right width. So I've got that correct. And then as you see, I've just taken the mauve color and I'm just sort of blending the two in the middle here um, just to get a really nice transition from one color to the next. Next. So next I added some more ink to the block and I then took my paintbrush and I just flicked over the white paper and including the little watercolored area as well in both the pink and the mauve color and it just gives a really nice effect I think it just stops the white being quite so stark it adds a little bit of depth to the watercolored area because it's obviously a little bit darker because I didn't water it down quite as much as I did for the watercolored section and it just really works you can see sometimes it flicks a bit much and you're like oh but actually once it dries it looks really effective so next while that's drying we're going to die cut our sentiment now for this card that I'm making here I need to die cut my sentiment in the white ink me card we need to use the same card as we did for our watercolor section um, because we need it to be the same thickness and I need to die cut the sentiment three times in the white so for this I'm just using my Sizzix and my magnetic platform. The Ink Me card is a really beautiful thick card so you'll want to probably run it through a couple of times just to make sure that you cut out all those little elements really cleanly. And here they are cut out two times. I actually didn't realise I'd need it three but you do need your three in the end. So then I knew how, I, how this piece was finish so I was quite happy that all I needed to do was cut it to size by cutting a piece off the bottom. Sometimes the top sort of gets a bit untidy by giving me myself the extra length it just gives me the opportunity to cut some off the top if I needed to but as I said I didn't so I just marked it cut it to the seven inches and as you can see it's a beautiful fit and it's fitting top to bottom I'm just doing it that way and then I need to cut my thanks from where the actual watercolour section is on this card. So just line it up. Obviously, because I'm using my magnetic platform, I don't need to stick that down. 
Um, but again, you need to run that through quite a few times. You need to make sure that it absolutely cuts out all those little pieces sharply because we're going to need all those little pieces. So you'll see here, I'm just actually lifting the die up. I'm being very careful. Um, but even then, one of the little bits stuck inside the die. So I just popped it out because you need to keep them all. Even that tiny little piece that came out of the center of the S, you need to keep all those pieces. So it's really, really important. Don't throw any of those away way you're going to absolutely need to use those so I'm just carefully popping that out because obviously I'm also going to need this front piece and I'm also going to need the word itself so you're going to need basically all of it so then I'm taking one of my white sentiments that we could die cut and I started to pop it in this way and then I realized that it would actually be easier to turn it upside down because what you need to do is pop that white piece in and you need to make sure it's in absolutely perfectly so I'm using my little tool here just to make sure it's sitting inside of it beautifully and then we're going to take all the little pieces that we cut out from the colored piece and we're going to start putting those in and obviously what you want to do is put them in so that they go in upside down but you want to obviously make sure they're still the correct orientation now most of them it's kind of obvious because it will fit correctly once it's in correctly once you get a piece in just get a piece of tape stick it in position because you want to hold that in place so that when you turn it over it's one piece of card and every little bit is held carefully and also by sticking the little pieces in you also want to make sure at the same time that the white one is also in position the actual sentiment so once that's all done you can see all the little bits are done you can turn it over and you can see now that you've got the white word but you've got all the colored centers that are all correct to what was cut out it's just it's about an illusion really and so we we're just beginning that now i wanted to pop this piece up so i've just used some of my hunky dory foam here and you can see I've put it all over the back of the word as well I just wanted to double check that all those pieces would stick and um, wouldn't fall out and also it just is to make sure all that dimension um, and it's all held up nicely because you know I get a bit obsessive about it dipping so I put a lot of foam on I then stamped the so much I'm sorry for some reason I didn't catch that on film but I just stamped it using the mauve uh, ink and you can see it's pretty simple I just stamped it it would have been simpler to have stamped it before I stuck it down with the foam so make sure you do it first um, then I'm taking the next white sentiment that we die cut and I've put on it some wet glue just some normal um, wet adhesive and I'm very carefully positioning it in place over the previous one now it kind of slots a little bit into the other one still um, so it does help itself to a certain extent and then I do a third one so I've currently got three layers of white sentiment I then follow it with the colored one that we cut out and this is really where the illusion is because the colored one is obviously it's exactly what is behind the little splotches are completely continuing the lines of the splotches and that's the other reason for doing like the little dots and the flicks because it just helps with that illusion and it's just the only thing that shows you that that sentiment is there is actually the shadow of the height and that's the other thing you don't want to go too high because if you go too high it almost spoils the illusion because you can see the white so you just want that high enough to get the shadow but not so high that you start seeing too much of the white then the final touch I did was I just added some sequins now I tend to sprinkle them on they sort of fall in a random pattern and you might move them a little bit but it just gives you a little bit of randomness to how they fall and you saw there's kind of three went down the bottom and one at the top I do like doing them in odds I think it looks better personally and then again just using some wet glue I'm just sticking those down uh, in position and there it is done I wanted to keep it really simple in that regard because the the main element the main focal point is that thanks and that kind of illusion and I just love the way that it's very delicate and um, definitely make sure you go on over to the blog post to see the other cards that I made so I hope that you like this card and I hope that you will like the others and I would love to see you over the blog post to have a look at them all so thank you so much for watching I hope you have enjoyed and
and um, I hope that you've caught the shows um, as always I will put links as well to the products used so you'll be able to see exactly what they are there on the blog post as well all right thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon bye for now bye Looking up at a pale pink sky It's telling me I'm gonna be alright I'm gonna be alright Say hello to my Mr. Moon Like nature I will be renewed